Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can hide an API key. So you want to do this to protect your key from falling into the wrong hands where it can be misused, potentially running up a very large and unexpected bill if it's being used to access a paid service. And I'll also be sharing with you some best practice tips for how to store your API key for maximum efficiency and also to minimize the risk of an accidental leak. So what you don't want to do is what I'm doing on screen right now, which is I have the API key in the code that I will serve on the front end. So this code will run in the browser. It's linked to index.html via a script tag. So if I run it, data is being fetched successfully using the API key, but could a user access the API key that I'm using? And the answer is quite easily, if they know what they're doing, all they have to do is to inspect element. So the API key is not directly accessible in the HTML. It's in the linked script.js file but all the user has to do to access that is click on sources, go to script.js, and there they would have access to your API key. Something else that you might try if you're running a React app is to import the API key as an environment variable on the front end. So I'll close down the previous example to stop things getting mixed up and open the app.js file of my React app. So to create this React app, I use the create React app command. And when you do that, by default, you can import environment variables from a .env file that is located in the root folder of your project. So to define an environment variable, it starts react underscore app underscore and then the specific name that you want to give to this environment variable so in this case api underscore key followed by the value that you want it to contain and then inside your app you can access it as an environment variable via process dot env so this is where the environment variables are stored and then the key, so with this approach, as you can see, the API key is no longer in the script. So if I was to share the source code for my project, excluding the .env file, so either manually, or if I'm using Git, I could exclude the .env file from being pushed. So this is useful for sharing your code without revealing your API key or any other secrets, and somebody else can plug in their own API key. But what about on the front end in the browser? So I already have a live production version of this app up and running on localhost port 3000. So if I go into sources, into static, take a look at the JavaScript, so app.js, which is actually a constructed file on the basis of a main.js file, which is what is actually served. So you can't see the API key here, but if we take a look at what is actually served, so what the browser sees, and then I try searching for weather, it's a weather API key. So I'll hide references in app.js. There is, however, a reference in the file that the browser received. And if I go along here, it's concatenating the API key value into the URL being used to make the API request. So once again, your API key is accessible to users who know how to look for it, even if you're accessing it as an environment variable, 
in React. So the fundamental point here is that if you're making an API call on the front end, then the code is going to have to run in the browser, including the API key. And that code, because it's in the browser, is going to be accessible to your users. So the solution is to make the API call on a backend server. On the front end, you just contact the backend server that makes the API call along with the API key, gets the data, and then sends back to the front end that contacted it the data it gets back from the API. So this is what I'm going to be showing you how to implement now via Node.js, first locally, and then how to configure a live deployed version. So because it's not the focus of this tutorial, I'm starting with some basic boilerplate code for a Node.js server using Express. So because we've only got an app.js file in this folder, we need to install a Node.js project into here. So if you haven't already, you need to install Node.js to follow these steps. If you don't have it already, you can get it for free from the Node.js website. So for what we're going to be working with, version 18 is fine. Now, once you've got Node, you want to access your project folder. And once you're in there, to create a new node project, execute npm init, and double flag y will accept all the default settings for a new node project. And we have one dependency external to node, which is express. And once that's installed, we could start the app by executing node app, but we're not currently doing anything in response to a request coming in to the forward slash API endpoint, but we already have the fetch part of the code available to us on the front end. So I'll just copy that and place it in the callback function for a request coming in to forward slash API, but we're not working on the front end anymore. Don't want to set it as the text of a HTML element. I want to send it back to the user and I can do that by passing the data into res.json, res referring to the response and that will be sent to the user in JSON format. Now I have a clash here between response and response object here. So to prevent that, I'll change the references for the response object that initially comes back from the fetch request. So I'll save this now and on the front end. I'll work with the vanilla JavaScript example just because the implementation is simpler. And now here you make your request to your own backend server that's going to contact the weather API on your behalf. So initially this is going to be deployed locally on port 3000. The endpoint that we configured is forward slash API. So the port is set on app.listen. Now, if I start the server and go to the front end, you'll see that it's not actually working. And if we inspect the problem a bit further, you can see that it's a cause error. So this is occurring because the node app is running on port 3000. My front end is running on port 5500. And so the server is blocking the request from being processed because the request is not coming from the same origin. This is actually a good thing because it provides a layer of protection from others being able to make requests to the server that you've set up. So to make an exception for a particular origin or origins, you can use the cause package or express. So I'm just going to post the code in here for making an exception. So I'm calling cause inside app.use. This means that settings that I specify apply to all endpoints that I define inside my app. Now the exception. So this has to be exact 
and it has to be exactly the same as the origin header that is sent along with the request. So if I go down to request headers here, this is the origin of the request that I'm making. This IP is just another way of expressing localhost, but it has to be exact as it is in the request headers. And this option here, this is recommended in the course documentation for compatibility with older browsers. So I'll leave that as it is, save this script, stop the current server. Now, before restarting, I have a new dependency, which is cause. And now when I start the server and go to the front end, it should now be making an exception for this origin. So you can see that we're getting the data back. And if I go to sources, all you see is that I'm making a request to the backend server. Now, even though the API key is no longer accessible in the browser, it's still considered bad practice to have your API key in your JavaScript file. I, I do here because what if I want to share this code with someone else? So if I share it as it is, I'd be giving away my API key. So to avoid this best practice is to access the API key and any other secrets that you have in your script from an environment variable. Now, how you should create environment variables, it varies depending upon whether your app is deployed or you're testing locally. So when you're deploying your app, usually you can define environment variables in the UI where you are deploying it. So this is for a live app that I have deployed to a shared hosting account via cPanel. So the two environment variables that I've defined in the UI are API underscore key and port. And if I show you the source code for this app, notice that I'm getting the API key and the port value from process.env for accessing environment variables, followed by key name. And if we take a look at the output for this app, it's working without me having to find anywhere in my code the values for the API key and the port. So this is a nice solution for deployment because it means in the files that you upload to create your app, nowhere in those is your API key or any other secrets mentioned. So somebody could have access to those files without any secret values being revealed and their current values can be centrally managed away from the source files. Now, when working locally, you don't have access to these environment variables. So to create new environment variables locally, you can use a package called .env and you call config on it to load any locally defined environment variables. So you do that in a dot env file in the root folder of your project. So in there, you define your secrets. And now in your code, like we did in the deployed version, we access the API key via process.env and I'll also access the value for the port in the same way. So I'll save this before running it. I need to install env as a dependency. After that has installed, I'll restart the app open the browser. So it's still working, which means that we're working successfully with environment variables in our test environment. Now there's nothing technically stopping you from using this solution in a production environment. But you should know that if you do that, then you have to upload the .env file 
and anyone with access to the source files will also have access to all your secrets. So as you saw, you can avoid that by setting environment variables when you are deploying your app. And then when you're uploading your files, avoid uploading the .env file along with the other project files. So if you're working with Git, you'd want to include a git ignore file specifying that you don't want node modules uploaded or .env. So that is it for this tutorial on how you can hide API keys and best practices or how to store it on the back end. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.